Hello, I'm Sarah Coates. Thanks for joining me. High-level meetings thought to be in Washington today with U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman there to meet with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Trump senior advisor Jared Kushner and other officials regarding Israel's plan to annex parts of the West Bank. Now, Washington was the orchestrator of the controversial so-called peace plan which set out that Israel could annex parts of the area and the Jordan Valley. Now, Israel is pushing forward with the July 1st plan, but as it stands, the US is trying to put the brakes on. Now, just a short while ago, I spoke with Mark Zell, who's the chairman of Republicans Abroad. What's happened in this administration, which is a sea change, over, what's, uh, over the policy of prior American administrations is that the, that the American administration will not dictate to Israel what the Israeli government determines to be in Israeli national security interests, okay? And now, that what that means is Israel has to determine, its government has to determine what is in its national security interests. I think the prime minister has been quite clear about this, and I and and I believe there's a, a there's a consensus here in Israel about it, about the ultimate importance of extending Israeli law to these areas. The Americans are partners to this discussion, and they're very supportive partners, and they're going to express their points of view. But when it comes down to the uh, when push comes to shove. What you're not going to see here, I strongly believe this, and, 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 and Ambassador Friedman's trip to the United States is not, uh, is, mm. it, it doesn't contradict what I'm saying. In fact, it supports it. If the Americans want to be a constructive part of this dialogue. They're going to give their opinions. But in the end of the day, in the end of the day, Sarah, the Israeli government, on behalf of the Israeli people, will have to say what it and what we want. Now, as those talks get underway, it seems political disagreements in Jerusalem could also foil the plan. In the West Bank, the Palestinian Authority is stepping up its fight, holding a rally in Jericho on Monday, with the UN envoy, Arab and foreign diplomats taking part. His Palestinian negotiator, Saab Erekat, speaking out. I think if an accession is implemented, that means they want to destroy the Palestinian Authority. And then Netanyahu can assume his full powers as an occupying power, from the River Jordan to the Mediterranean. That's number one. Second, the presence of these foreign diplomats today and the speeches given by the UN, the EU, China, Russia, Japan, Jordan, and others, was a message to Trump and to Netanyahu. You are on one side and the whole world is on the other side. You have the choice. In accession means the bath of death. In the occupation, and the two-state solution is the bath of life. I hope they use their hearing skills today, Trump and Netanyahu, and I hope they will choose the path of peace and life. And our correspondent Alec Pollard joins me here in studio. Alec, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, firstly, let's talk about this anticipated meeting in uh, Washington with these uh, top lawmakers there and also the Israeli uh, ambassador, uh, the envoy rather. Uh, what can we expect to come out of that? Well. As far as Israel is concerned, in order to move ahead with this annexation move, they don't have the support of practically anybody in the international community, at least official uh, country positions for this move. The only support is coming from the United States, which is why it's so critical from Israel's point of view to be in sync with the American position on this. And this, from this meeting, perhaps we can get a glimpse a bit more of where the U.S. currently stands, because there are several camps inside the American administration regarding Israeli annexation. For instance, on the one hand, you have Jared Kushner, who was one of the major architects of the Trump peace plan. And for him, it's very important that that plan moves forward. And he knows that cannot happen if Israel proceeds with a unilateral annexation move or annexation of 30 percent of the West Bank territory, as the plan stipulates, because the plan stipulates that it's done as part of a negotiation with the Palestinians, which is currently not going on. Kushner is in contact also with King Abdallah, with uh, um, uh, bin Salman of Saudi Arabia. So he doesn't want Israel to push forward too strongly. He's pulling the reins back in. On the other hand, we have the ambassador, David Friedman, who is more of the viewpoint that Israel should proceed with annexing the full 30 percent. Mike Pompeo is somewhere in the middle perhaps. So perhaps the tiebreaker could come from President Trump himself. Uh, we're hearing that he could be involved in this meeting and the way Trump makes decisions often, he sometimes does them 
very much based on his instinct. He doesn't go into the details of the plan, and he could be really critical here on where the U.S. in the end stands on the viewpoint of Israeli annexation. And certainly uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, support from Republicans. What about the other side of the fence? What are we hearing uh, from Democrats uh, with all of this annexation talk? Yes, so we did see uh, some Democrats uh, in the Senate and in Congress um, stating that they are against it. They came out with an official position. Uh, of course, there are several wings in the Democratic Party. Uh, the ones who are uh, very much involved now, for instance, in the George Floyd protest and the more progressive wing will certainly be against it. But there are some more conservative, conservative Democrats who may have different positions. But even they would probably not quite support uh, this move. Joe Biden probably uh, is not on board with an Israeli annexation move. And here it's very critical uh, what will happen in the U.S. elections. And that's one of the reasons why uh, Israelis who are in favor of annexation want to push forward now, as long as President Trump is president, before potentially, because we don't know what the election result will be, the Democrats come into power and then the entire uh, game changes. Mm, and do, do you believe uh, that, you know, maybe instead of this 30 percent annexation, uh, which is what is stated in this so-called peace plan, uh, do, you leave, do you believe that, you know, if uh, Israel doesn't get this full support of the US like it's chasing, it might then just go and uh, annex symbolic smaller parts? So that is currently where it looks like this is all going, an incremental annexation in stages that would begin with the major settlement blocks, Malé, Dumim, Ariel, and maybe also what's called Gush Etzion, rather than going for the entire territory. And there's a lot of advantages, at least for Netanyahu, for doing this, even advantages uh, from the point of view of those settlers who want a, a complete annexation of the entire West Bank, who don't even agree to 30 percent that it's not enough for them, because if Netanyahu does it incrementally, you can say, OK, we're doing this stage now. This is the first step, but it's not ruling out doing anything else. It doesn't rule out going for a complete annexation. And Netanyahu loves to walk that middle path between the international community and the pressure he has from the right wing. And if he does an incremental move, he can do that. He can sell it both ways. He can say to the settlers, look, this is just the first step. We're going to go for everything. And to the international community or to the Americans, he can say the Trump peace plan is still on. We're still within the confines of the Trump peace plan. And that is certainly a move that it, it seems to be more feasible and he can also get Benny Gantz and Gabi Ashkenazi on board with a smaller move that involves the settlement blocks, maybe parts of the Jordan Valley. And the Americans have said that they very much want to see this as a coordinated Israeli move between both sides of this unity government. And because American support is so important, that would be the most tactical way to move forward uh, on this issue for Netanyahu. So if, in fact, uh, that is what we see come July 1st, what could we expect uh, a reaction from Palestinians? to look like? Well, that's a very interesting question that nobody really has the answer to. We know the official position. We heard Saib Evakat uh, speaking about it earlier. They're talking about uh, annulling basically the Oslo Accords, uh, the falling apart of the Palestinian Authority, stopping the security coordination. We also have the Jordanians who are talking about uh, uh, their reaction, which would be downgrading their relations with Israel, maybe even annulling the peace treaty. These are the big threats that are coming from the Arab world. The question is, do they really have the ability to make good on those threats because they have their issues that they have to deal with. Jordan can't just annul the peace treaty with Israel because then what will happen with their relations with the United States, for instance? So uh, the question is, do they really have the stick uh, to, that they claim to have when they are threatening with these actions? But that certainly is the concern of many, many Israelis who are against annexation, the upheaval that it could cause. Certainly a lot of uh, concern with the stability uh, here in the region. Alec Pollard, thank you. And we do need to go out for a short break. When we come back, we'll bring you the very latest corona updates from right here in Israel. Stay with us.